There's a proud tradition of football here at Bowling Green as they celebrate 100 years of it. Bryant Kobach for Toledo as the Rockets fly in, one of the top running backs in the nation. Brandon Purse for Bowling Green, a look and try and stop Kobach in a powerful Toledo offense as it's the battle of I-75, two teams separated stadium to stadium, 25 miles apart. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. Brought to you proudly by the Home Depot as 4-1 Toledo invades to take on 1-4 Bowling Green here in this rivalry game here in mid-October. Great to see you alongside Ross Tucker. Played his college ball at Princeton seven years in the NFL. My name is Ben Holden. Justin Walters will join us on the field as well. And Ross, rivalry games mean everything to the schools, the communities, everyone that follows their programs. What's it mean to you having played well, in them? Look, I know it's a cliche when they say throw the records out, but it's true, and it's a good thing it's true today because these are two programs in very different spots right now. Toledo just keeps rolling. Nine wins, six out of the last eight yeah. years. Meanwhile, Bowling Green absolutely rebuilding under first-year head coach Scott Leffler. They certainly are. And let's first talk about Toledo and their general on offense, Mitch Guadani, he is a dynamite quarterback, Ross. He does it all. Well, he certainly does. You saw last week against Western Michigan dropping bombs to Bryce Mitchell. He does it deep shots. He's really good on the move. And I think what separates him from a lot of quarterbacks is how well he runs. He had over 100 yards rushing against Colorado State earlier this year. And his first taste of this rivalry, he's a veteran guy, only played in it once two years ago here. He was one for one, so he gets his first taste today. Time now to take a look at our Do Project Smarter brought to you by Home Depot. And Brandon Purse is going to have to have a big day for Bowling Green. He is fun to watch he on is. tape. Watch him key and diagnose this run against Kansas State and beat the blocker to the point. But he's not just a run defender. He does a nice job reading the quarterback's eyes, shows the athleticism to be able to get a piece of the ball and make the interception. He's going to have to be all over the field today. All right, we'll keep our eyes on him. Third member of our team today, as I mentioned, Justin Walters with more on this great rivalry. Thanks, Ben. I-75 is much more than just an interstate in Northwest Ohio. It's also a battleground for Bowling Green and Toledo. Only 25 miles separate the two schools. This football rivalry is rich and dates back to 1919. Legend has it that the rocket on Toledo's campus is actually pointing south in a direction to Bowling Green's football stadium. As of late, the battle of I-75 trophy has been completely one-sided. Toledo has won the last nine straight games. Matter of fact, the last time Bowling Green beat the Rockets, this wasn't called the I-75 trophy. It was called the Peace Pipe trophy, Ben. Yeah, it was. A lot's changed, but one thing that's remained consistent is Justin touched on there. Nine consecutive wins for the Toledo Rockets. Bowling Green looking to end that trend as the Rockets will kick it away. It'll be Thomas Clucky, who's been doing double duty the last couple of weeks. Bailey Flint, their punter, he's been kicking off and punting. And this 84th meeting between these longtime rivals is underway. Bryson Denley under the kickoff, and he'll bring it out for Bowling Green. A big return. There's a flag down as he got near the 35-yard line on the return for Bowling Green. We'll check the marker. Our referee today is Tom Stapleton. Denley's clearly the most explosive guy on Bowling Green's team. They try to get him the ball in so many different ways. During the return, holding, return team number 27. 10-yard penalty from the end of the return, first down. So a costly break there for Bowling Green, negating a good kickoff return. Would have been 27, but it won't be now. It'll be backed up. Chick-fil-A lineups, Ross. And we take a look now at the starting quarterback for Bowling Green. They've been playing two, but Grant Loy gets the nod today. What have you seen from him on tape? He physically looks the part, that's for sure. Just watching him warm up before the game, he looks like Trevor Lawrence. He's got the nice <laughs> flow. He's well built, and he's going to have to do this. And he keeps it in. Grant Loy off and running on the first play from scrimmage for Bowling Green. Deep inside of Toledo territory. No flags. The Falcons are off and flying on their first play. Quarterback run game is so difficult to defend. The right guard pulls and kicks out. Nice job by the tight end. And it didn't look to me like Toledo was expecting a quarterback run at all. Grant Loy, he's 6'5", 225, but he can pick him up and put him down. Great start for the Falcons. 61-yard pickup. Coming in, he had 87 yards on the ground. 
as he gets buried here, just shy of the 20 yard line. Uh, that Toledo front, very good defensive group. Let's take a look at the rest of the starters brought to us by Chick-fil-A for Bowling Green. Who do you highlight today here, Ross? I think you gotta go with Quentin Morris. All he did last week against Nerdeem was have 10 receptions. He's really more of a H-back move tight end type as much as anything else. He leads the team with 26 catches, 310 yards, two touchdowns. Look for him, especially when Loy boots out on some of their nakeds and bootlegs. We will do that. Here goes Loy, swings it. Denley's there, got the catch at the 15. Pick up of six on the play, brings up third down for Bowling Green. We take a look now at the Toledo defense. This is a stout group. They're good all the way, all three levels. Who do you like? And only a couple seniors out there. How about Saeed Holt? The sophomore nickelback, 12 tackles, a sack and a half last week, including the two game-saving plays against Western Michigan. He was the Mac West defensive player of the week. You mentioned Morris, the tight end for Bowling Green. Let's see if they look to him. Instead, they swing it out, and unable to make the grab was Davon Jones. So it brings up fourth down, and it, Scott Leffler is going to trot on the field goal unit to try to get the first points here of the day after that 61-yard run by Grant Lloyd. Nate Needham will come on and attempt the field goal for Bowling Green. There's Jason Candle, the Toledo Rockets head coach, in his fourth full season. It'll be a 32-yard attempt. And it is pretty windy here. It's a swirling wind. He's kicking into the wind, but at 32 yards, he should still be okay. Puts the right foot into it, and the kick is up and good. And Bowling Green has a 3-0 lead here on top of Toledo. Grant Loy setting Scott Leffler's team up here. The 61-yard run, they cap it off with a 32-yard field goal to lead by three. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Home Depot. More saving, more doing. By the Ram 1500, Motor Trend's 2019 Truck of the Year. And by Chick-fil-A. Try their grilled nuggets for a bite-sized backyard taste of the grill on the go. Look at some of the other great rivalries and trophies and even a wagon wheel some of these schools play for. Kent State Akron play for that wagon wheel. Here's the full list of them today, of course, the Battle of I-75. Trophy made out of granite. 25 miles, stadium to stadium for these two programs. They're separated by. There is the trophy. Bowling Green's never had it. Toledo has owned it. As Ronnie Jones back deep for Toledo awaiting the kick. The Mason Lawler, the Rocket fans, made their way down 75. Nice, beautiful fall day here in Bowling Green, Ohio. Short kick be fielded at the 27 by Desmond Phillips. And Phillips has wrapped up and dropped. Good job by that kick coverage team. They get down there and make the play. Trayvon Raymore made the stop. Chick-fil-A lineups, Ross. Let's take a look now. A little bit closer in depth. We showed him in the open. Mitch Guidani, what's the book on him? Well, the book on him is that he's one of the best dual threat quarterbacks in the country that a lot of people don't know about. He had two touchdowns running and two touchdowns throwing last week in the big win over Western Michigan, one of the best teams in the MAC. So Toledo comes in averaging 33.8 per game. That's second in the MAC. And here they give it off to Kobach and Bowling Green, not fooled at all. So Kobach, who came in as the top rusher in the MAC per game, fourth in the country, slowed there. The Rockets offense brought to a spot. Check play. Who do you highlight? Well, the guy you just mentioned, Brian Kobach. How about the fact that he is number one in the MAC? Yeah. 126 yards per game. He had 177 last week against Western Michigan. Had 11 carries for. 90 yards and three touchdowns last year when these two teams met. And his three touchdowns all came in the fourth quarter. Ladani changing things up. Play clock winding down, down to two, and he gets it away. Into the bread basket of Kovac. Kovac cuts inside and taken down from behind. Nice play made, turned in there by Nico Lautnin. And the Bowling Green defense, who do you like there today, Ross? 
I'm going to go with David Konowalski, the sixth year defensive end who tore his Achilles last year. The coaches said he has been the most vocal leader. They're so glad he came back for his sixth year. 24 starts, 112 tackles in his Bowling Green career. Third down and eight. Guadani out of the gun. Guadani down the middle. Wide open catch is made there by the tight end. One of their tight ends, Drew Rossi. And that'll move the sticks for Toledo as they convert on third down. Toledo going with the hurry up. Here's the play before. Nice job by Brian Kovac, the running back in protection. And the Rockets, they go quick. Now they take a shot. They love to do this down the far side. Dropping the bucket. And a beautiful catch there by Danzel McKinley Lewis. What a shot there. It's first and goal, Toledo. I mean, Ben, you just can't throw it any better. Oh. It was good coverage. You want to try to make them throw it deep, but Guadani has shown a consistent ability to put the ball right where it needs to be. And that time, it wasn't even Bryce Mitchell. It was McKinley Lewis. A 48-yard pickup. Now back to the ground game with Kobach in the front there for Bowling Green. Standing tough. Minimal pickup there, if anything. As Kobach gets back to his feet, the sophomore out of Holland, Ohio, started his college career at Kentucky. Wanted to come back home and was able to do that. He has been great for them. We saw him last year a couple times. And when you get down here near the goal line, keep in mind the quarterback run game. It's such a big part of what they do, especially down near the red zone. And Scott Leffler saw something he didn't like. He just yep. sprinted down the sideline to get a Bowling Green timeout in. So the first year head coach, Scott Leffler, wanted to get with his guys, talk things over. There he is. As Jason Candle and the Rockets will do it as well. Leffler's only win came against Morgan State in their opener in late August here in this stadium. Let's take a look now at our principal financial game plan for today, Ross. The keys for each team. We'll start with Toledo. Get off to a fast start. Maybe not so much with the Grant Loy run. But yeah. when you're the favorite in a game, you want to, as soon as possible, exert your dominance and then keep Grant Loy in the pocket. Didn't do a very good job of that on the first play. For Bowling Green, they're going to have to win the turnover battle, and they can't let Toledo run over them. Going to have to make them throw and hope Guadani can't keep having pinpoint precision like he did on that deep throw down the sideline of McKinley Lewis. Jason. Keep your eye on the quarterback run game here. Jason Candle, fourth full season as Bowling. There's Toledo's head coach. He's perfect against Bowling Green. That's just a winner. He's done it as a player and a coach. He's won everywhere he's been. Second and goal now here for Guadani. Empty backfield. Penalty flags all over the far side of the field. And they were coming with the quarterback power right there. Ball start. Offense, number 58. Five-yard penalty, second down. On the right tackle, Cameron Bell, the guilty one. Cameron Bell's at the top of the screen. Kind of hard to see him flinch, but Nico Lautinen came across the line but look it was going to be quarterback power they, they were pulling the center yeah it's the same play they ran last week for a touchdown against Drew Rossi second and goal for Guadani and the ball's on the deck and a battle for Guadani looked to get in there but Bowling Green was sniffing around and Bowling Green's got the football the Falcons come over with a first turnover of the game Scott Leffler's team with a lead and the Rock. Funny things happen in rivalry games. It's the mesh point. Guadani wanted to pull it, but Kobach thought he was getting it. You have to have a feel for that. They've done that a million times. And Loudon, the fifth-year senior at the bottom of that pile, ripped it away for the Falcons. So Bowling Green, a 3-0 lead, and the football back. They get the first turnover in this great rivalry. They're trying to win it this year. Off to a good start on the Falcons. First quarter here in the Battle of I-75. 3-0 Bowling Green on top. The PBR World Finals are a month away, and riders are trying to rack up as many points as possible before the final ride. Tomorrow night at 6 Eastern, don't miss the toughest sport on dirt. Take center stage for the Greensboro Invitational, only on CBS Sports Network. So. Sixth fumble and fifth lost fumble of the season for Toledo, recovered by Nico Lautinen. 
Third fumble recovery of the year for Bowling Green. Scott Leffler from Barberton, Ohio, the same hometown as the late, great Bo Schembechler. He told us yesterday, he said, there were three rivalries I watched when I was a kid. In this order, this is how they went chronologically. Michigan, Notre Dame, of course, Michigan, Ohio State, and Bowling Green, Toledo. And now he's living it. And his team on top, 3-0 on second down and nine. Grant Loy checks off, and nothing doing there. Denley was wrapped up and dropped immediately. Stepping up the safety there, Bauer on the stop. Bauer gets a lot of playing time. He's also the extra defensive back that comes in in obvious passing situations. They were all over that bootleg. We were joking with Scott Leffler yesterday. I thought they might have set the record all time for screens and bootlegs <laughs> called in one game last week yeah. against Notre Dame. This is the situation they have to avoid third and long. They struggle in these situations. They certainly have this season. Lloyd back to throw it and fires and a bullet caught by Austin Doris at the 20 yard line. That's a first down. They're gonna give him progress out nearly to the 22. So you got Morris and Doris. This time it's Doris. One thing they have done, you'll see Doris right side of your screen. He's just gonna run a little stop pattern. He stops right in the middle of the zone. Lloyd timed that up perfectly. Again, excellent protection. One thing the Falcons have done very well. They've only allowed six sacks all season. Lloyd fakes the handoff, wants to run this thing, gets a block, good pickup there, decent pickup. As he was forced out of bounds. And Austin Doris with a block there, forced out of bounds. By Darlo Blue. You know, a lot of times in the run game on defense, you always think, okay, well, we'll get one more guy in the box and they have to block us. Well, when the quarterback's a big part of that run game, it takes away the number count advantage for the defense. It has totally changed every level of football, especially college football. No doubt about it. Second and six. Keeper here again from Loy. Not much there, if anything. Devin Rogers leading the charge up front for the Rockets. So third down upcoming here. They're going to need four to convert from the 28-yard line. But this is a situation they can live in. You know, with their two tight ends, Doris and Morris. Yeah. Yes, it is Doris That's and right. Morris. That's right. Yeah, it is. Those guys are especially good in third and medium. Take a look at these two guys right there. Doris and Morris. Those are the guys they look to because they're still pretty inexperienced at the receiver position. Clint Morris, two of their five receiving touchdowns as Davon Jones does the job. Davon Jones, good pick up there. Six-yard gain move. The sticks for Bowling Green once again. How about running the ball on third and four? Yeah. You don't see that very often. Love the spin move by the Boston College transfer. Right there, 235 pounds. Got a little wiggle to him. He did that three times in the second quarter last week against Notre Dame. The exact same move. Hit the B button, right? <laughs> First down, Bowling Green. Out of the gun. Protection good. Pass down the middle. It's caught. It is caught. Denley's got it. Denley racing into the end zone. No flags. Touchdown, Bowling Green. 66 yard strike. And the Falcons are up 9 0 with a point after pending. This is unbelievable. I love it. This is why you play the games. Yes. 4 and 1 Toledo, 1 and 4 Bowling Green. They get the ball to Denley. He's a running back left side of your screen. Lloyd puts it right where he has to. The defensive back for Toledo, Womack, went for the pick, and Denley is the fastest guy on this Bowling Green team. What a start for the Falcons. Beautiful start. They couldn't have scripted it any better. Needham tries to point after, and he knocks that through with 7.35 to go, and it's a 10-0 lead for Bowling Green. I think maybe Toledo was as worried about the tight ends as we were. Look at Grant Lloyd. These Falcons are fired up, and they should be. Welcome back here to Bowling Green. Let's take a look at how they scored a touchdown. It was Denley out of the backfield. He goes right down the seam. It's a zone coverage. You can roll it, guys. This is the way you get explosive plays. If you have the back out of the backfield, it's zone coverage. Womack right there goes for the interception. A couple of nice downfield blocks 
and Denley has some legit speed. Yeah. Love the design by Leffler to have Denley, the running back out of the backfield, run right down the hash, down the seam like that. You don't see that very often, and Toledo not able to make the play. He told us, Leffler did yesterday, about Denley. He can run like a deer. I think we just saw it. Seven plays, 91 yards. The 66-yard house call took 3.07. That was the longest and is the longest play of the year for Bowling Green so far. They've had two monstrous plays in this game, and they've led to points as Lawler has it teed up and boots it away as Jones will take it and bobbled it inside of the five. And Ronnie Jones, all kinds of trouble, and is very lucky that didn't go in the end zone. This is unbelievable right now. Wow, the ultimate reality TV, as I like to say. I mean, you're talking you about know. a Toledo team that's won four games in a row. Yes. And including against Colorado State and BYU. Ronnie Jones, the ball goes right through his wickets. Yep. And then he just dives on it. They're going to have the ball at the half-yard line yeah. right there. Yeah. Tom Stapleton, our referee today. There's a penalty flag back at the 29. Dead ball, personal foul, number seven of the kicking team, or I'm sorry, the receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, you never want to get an unnecessary roughness penalty, but if it's only going to be a, a quarter of an inch, that's probably a good time to do it. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes, very lucky. I mean, this place is going bananas it right is. now. As I, loud I as it's been all year. If you haven't been following the MAC or Bowling Green, the scores of Bowling Green's games, they lost 52 to nothing to Kansas State, 35-7 to Louisiana Tech, 62-20 to Kent State, and last week, 52-0 to Notre Dame. They've had a rough, rough stretch, and here they are now with a 10-0 lead, and Toledo is backed up. They've been outscored 201-27 to in those last four games. Guadani takes a shot and overthrows the intended target out there. Bryce Mitchell, who they love to take deep shots to. So second down upcoming. Mitchell having a great year in terms of catching the deep ball. He's got three over 40 yards, but can't come up with that one there, Ross. Excellent job by Caleb Biggers, number two for Bowling Green. Former safety. They moved him to corner as an emergency. I would expect some type of run game here now on second down. They got to get the punter at least some room. Shaquif Seymour, the deep back. Gilliam was shifting in motion. Now Seymour, not much there. A little bit of breathing room as Seymour tried the right side. So it brings up third down and long after the muffed kickoff return by Ronnie Jones. And this place is jumping now here in Bowling Green, Ohio. You know, this almost feels like you go to a movie and your expectations aren't that high, and it's exceeding your expectations. This is a huge play right here. Monster play right now. Seymour to the left of Godani. Godani wants to throw, dumped it off to Seymour. Seymour trying to find room. Can't Bowling Green. They get hats to the football, and they force fourth down, and Toledo's going to have to punt. Brandon Purse and Colby Coleman leading the charge. I think they were expecting pressure because they went with a screen, but there was no pressure. Bowling Green was just in zone coverage, so Jerry Roberts got in there, number 33. Brandon Purse helped to finish it off, and a gigantic three and out for Bowling Green. They should get the ball back again here in excellent field position. So here's Clucky on to punt it away from the back of his end zone. And a good punt by Clucky, who's really been booming the football. This is a huge kick, fielded, and shy of the 30-yard line. Jake Rogers was back there. He handled it, and good work from Clucky there. 5.57 to go in the opening quarter. Bowling Green lost nine in a row to Toledo. They lead 10-0 here in the first. Let's go back to November 27, 2009, right here at Doit Perry Stadium. Tyler Sheehan threw for two touchdowns, three rushing scores on the ground as well for Bowling Green that day, and they won 38-24.
Bowling Green's last win against Toledo. They've dropped, as we mentioned, the last nine in a row. Leffler telling us yesterday, it's got to change. Has to change at some point. You need both sides to win to me to make it a competitive rivalry. I don't know how you feel about that, Ross. Without question, he yeah. compared it to Ohio State-Michigan. He did. A rivalry he knows very well. R.B. Marlowe with the football there. And sometimes, Ben, you know, you say it's a cliche, throw the records out in a rivalry game. It's true. I, I mean, this crowd, the Bowling Green sideline right yeah. now, they are going berserk. I mean, the energy right now is amazing, and they believe now. That's a they big, do. big part of it. They believe. Just 67 scholarship players. You can have 85 as Grant Loy keeps it right side and up high there on the tackle. No flag. Good play according to the referees. The stop made. They did not show a lot of the quarterback run game against Notre Dame. Nice job out there by Big Country. Tanner Blair and tackle went high there, but did not grab the face mask. Was not a horse caller. That was a legal tackle. But they are taking advantage of Grant Loy's size and legs. 6'5", 223 is Loy. Here's Davon Jones, left side. Takes it to the just over the midfield stripe here as we're inside of five to play in the opening quarter. But just joining us, Bowling Green with a 33 yard field goal and then a 66 yard pitch and catch from that young man, Grant Loy, to Henley, the longest play of the year. That's what he's done so far tonight, this afternoon, I should say, four out of five, and he's been productive in both throwing and running the ball. Second and seven. Loy forced out of the pocket, didn't get rid of the football, and Toledo comes up with a good play, dropping him. And it's Nate Gibhan who got him. Gibhan comes from the left side off the edge. They got a tight end blocking him, but really, that's a decent job by the tight end. This is one where Grant Loy has to have that internal clock. He's got to throw the football away. Got to have better pocket presence and awareness and know that you're not going to run away from that defensive end, that he's too close. That's a huge loss of yardage for Bowling Green. Third and seven now. Loy dumps it off. Davon Jones, they're not going to get it. Forced out of bounds near the 38-yard line. So the punt team will come on, and Toledo will get the football back here with less than four to play in the opening quarter after the Rockets get a stop on defense they desperately needed. Well, and they had gotten 15 yards on three straight runs for that drive. They got a first down, then they got a uh, second and five. I bet if Scott Leffler had it back, he probably would have stayed on the ground. So Matt Narano on to punt. He punted eight times last week at Notre Dame, the lefty. Fair catch called for. And the ball's going to be down inside of the 25-yard line by the coverage team for Bowling Green. Mitchell down there to make the play with 3.15 to go. The Falcon Band, you mentioned the electricity in here. They haven't had a lot to cheer about here, but let's get down to Justin Walters. He's got some more. Ben, there isn't any panic at all on the Toledo sidelines. They understand this game is still very early. Everyone is just going on around and repeating, step it up, step it up, let's set the tone. It's just 10-0, and they know this game is very early. No panic at all. All right, thank you, Justin, for the update. There's Toledo's had to find a way in three of their games. They've had to come up with stops late in the game, but they have not been in this position this early on as Mitchell had the reception there his first of the day and it's interesting Ben to follow up on what Justin said they're not a veteran team but they are an experienced team. yeah they don't have a lot of seniors but we saw a lot of these guys play last year against Nevada right here we did on CBS Sports Network they put up almost 70 in that game as Kobach keeps it there a little bit shy a couple yards shy of the first down run for Ryan Kobach man any time Bowling Green get a stop it is gigantic. Third and short here. How about that? Bowling Green doubling up Toledo in the ground game. This is Kobach again. And Kobach works, turned those legs, kept him turning and burning. He's got the first down out near the 40-yard line. I would expect a heavy dose 
of Kovac and Guadani on the ground right now as Coleman Abrams and the defensive guys for Bowling Green try to make a play. Free play here. Yeah, free play. They throw it downfield, and now they blow it dead. As Desmond Phillips was downfield. We'll get the word from our referee here, Stapleton. Offside. Defense, number 33. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Jerry Roberts, the guilty one there. Jerry Roberts, I had a chance to call a couple of his games. Top of your screen. A couple guys were early. Brooks was early as well off the top. Roberts went to Erie Cathedral Prep, played in three state championship games. I had the pleasure of calling those games. Terrific high school football players, you yeah. would imagine. He had three defensive touchdowns in his junior year up there in Erie. So first and five here for Toledo. From their own 45, trailing 10-0. Kobach, right side, carves his way through there, pushing the pile. And Kobach with a 14-yard pickup. And to Justin's point, it does feel like Toledo has started to settle down a little bit. It's just going to be inside zone to the left. Watch all the offensive linemen go to the left. You'll see them. And then up on the second level, they've got a really nice offensive line. Protection here for Guadani. Looking for Mitchell near side, out of bounds, incomplete. So Mitch Guadani didn't play in this game last year. Played in the game in 2017. Threw one pass for 16 yards. Was injured last year a couple times. His season ended when his collarbone was broken in the game against Western Michigan. Jason Candle. They said all he does is win. Everywhere he's been, he's been a winner. Team in a 10-0 hole now. Delay on the handoff. Heavy hit delivered, but a good run there. Turned in by Shaquille Seymour. And it's going to bring up a third down for the Rockets. Could be four down territory here. So you know that ahead of time. They bring the receiver in underneath motion. Again, well blocked. There's your guy, Jerry Robertson, made the hit. Now there's a Bowling Green player. You see they're down. Well, that's scary when a guy goes down that's, that late that, after a play. That's Roberts, too, who made that heavy hit. You can hear that all the way up here. The redshirt sophomore out of Erie, PA. Watch him run across the formation. Well, he still may have been woozy from that hit he delivered. And he just fell down. He walks off under his own power, so that's good to see for him. They'll tend to him on the sideline. So Eldridge Salguero will step in, at least here for one play. I mean, you don't see that very often. No. A guy running to get into place, and it's like he lost his balance. Yeah. Bizarre. Yeah, that's scary. It is. Third down and four upcoming. They'll tend to Roberts on the Bowling Green sideline. You said, Ross, this very well may be four down territory the way this game has gone so far. Well, and it depends on how many yards they get here. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if we see two runs in a row if they need it. So you need to get to the 37 to convert. With Donnie, looks for... One of his main men on the receiving core, McKinley Lewis, the catch in the first down of the 35 for Toledo. And it was a pretty nice break on the ball by number 28, Jawan Hudson, for Bowling Green. He almost made that play. So fresh set of downs here for Toledo from the Falcon 35. Phillips, the motion man. Guadani looking, looking to Phillips, and that one out of bounds. 23 ticks of the clock remaining in the quarter, second and 10 coming up. It's three throws in a row down the sideline that Guadani has been way off on. That was one of the things we talked about as a key to the game, is to really make Guadani throw and throw deep. Now, he can do it, and he can do it well, but they just run the ball so well. Number one rushing offense in the MAC. 265 yards a game. You can't let him just run it down your throat. Ninth play of the drive coming up here on second and ten. 
Straight ahead, power there. Inside of the 33-yard line, Shaquif Seymour, the carry there. Seymour in the game here two years ago, five touchdowns in the win for Toledo. I don't, think Toledo's, I don't think Toledo's going to get another playoff here. They're not. That's it. So they'll switch ends. 84th meeting between these two proud programs here in Northwest Ohio. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Bowling Green 10, Toledo nothing. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network presented by the Home Depot. Great to have you with us here on this beautiful October Saturday here in Northwest Ohio. Time now for our Eye on College Football, brought to you by Simply Safe. Around the MAC, we take a look at some of the keynotes. Jonathan Ward's a special guy up there in Mount Pleasant. Frank Solich going for second all time in the Mid-American Conference. And Toledo, four straight coming into this game, Ross. And you see the standings, each team Toledo and Bowling Green. This is their second MAC game. As Toledo had a divisional game last week in which they won against Western Michigan at home by seven. Over the middle, catch made shy of the 25-yard line by Desmond Phillips on our first play of the second quarter here at Doit Perry Stadium, eight of four. And this is decision time right yeah, it now. It's going to be fourth and short. I think they're going to go. I think they should go. It's a little bit into the wind down here, but when you run the ball as well as Toledo does, especially with the quarterback run game, wouldn't be surprised if Kodani number six gets involved. Reggie Gilliam, their tight end, in a each back spot to the right of Guadani. Guadani fakes it, keeps it. You said it, Ross. There he goes, and Guadani picks it up. Nice piece of running there by Mitch Guadani. Dad, a linebacker in his days at Michigan for Bo Schembechler. He knows a thing or two about rivalry. Six-yard pickup. A little surprised that nobody was out there. Reggie Gilliam, the tight end, number 14, had to look to try to find someone. Watch 14 get out there. He's looking to try to find yeah. someone to block Bowling Green. Not as keyed into the quarterback run game as I was. <laughs> Fresh set of downs here for Toledo. From the 20. With Donnie again, and he's going to lose some. Good pursuit there by Bowling Green. <laughs> Ton of orange hats out there. And the funny thing is, is Bowling Green tried to call timeout before that play. <laughs> they were late. They watch quarterback sweep to the left. Terrific pursuit and a nice job right by the corner the there. Hudson. Yeah. Watch Hudson 28 come up and just stick Kovac right there and push everything back inside. Yep. They are really running, but what's funny is the Bowling Green coaches were calling, trying to call timeout. They were just too late. Sometimes it works in your favor. 13th play of the drive for Toledo. They're looking for their first points of the day. Guadani tucks it. He's been injured sliding a couple times in his career. Took a shot there. Appears to be fine as he gets up. As Colby Coleman Abrams made the tackle. He was still slow to get up there, though. This was a called pass. I'm talking with Jason Candle, his head coach before the game, about Mitch Kodani as a runner. He said, you know, you don't have to have a quarterback that can run, but it's really nice. Oh, yeah. He called it the get-out-of-jail-free card. <laughs> Here is Kodani. Gilliam goes in motion. Mitchell, bottom of your screen, number 80, runs a slant, they go the other way instead, and it is caught! Caught for the touchdown, out of the backfield, it's Brian Kovac! Toledo's on the board, a beautiful throw from Mitch Guadani, and it's a 10-6 game now. I mean, perfect touch in the face of pressure. And it goes oh. right to Kovac. Brandon Purse, the linebacker, was there. He had an arm. Watch the left side of your screen. You're going to see Coleman coming. And Guadani knowing he's going to take a shot to put the perfect arc on the football. That is so well done. Beautiful throw. Beautiful concentration as Evan Davis tacks on the point after. And it's a three-point lead now. Bowling Green up 10-7. Mitch Guadani knew his team needed him to make a big play. He did it with his legs, and then he did it with his arm.
So Mitch Guidani, 14 plays, 75 yards, and Ross, a 14-yard strike to Kobach to cap it yeah, off. Kobach was in the backfield. Coleman came off the edge. Purse had to cover Kobach, who came out of the backfield. Watch this. Kobach goes right past. You can run it, guys, right past Coleman. Guidani has to step back to make the throw. I mean, that is an unbelievable throw and catch by a quarterback off of his back foot under duress to a running back out of the backfield who was actually covered pretty well by Brandon Purse. So Bowling Green on top by three. Denley number 12, Mitchell number 11 back deep. Awaiting the kick from Thomas Clucky. Toe meets leather and he sends this one inside of the five on the hop played brought back by denley and he's shy of the 20-yard line so how about this statistic here ross for bowling green first time they've had a lead after a quarter against bowling green against toledo going all the way back to 2011. Wow. start your football sunday with the cbs sports network tops crew as they offer unmatched analysis for each week's slate of nfl action it's that other pregame show tomorrow morning at 8 Eastern on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. I love that show. London Fletcher, Amy Trask, my former teammate London Fletcher. I was on the sideline a couple weeks ago in Washington when he got put in the, the ring of honor yeah. for the Redskins. Good stuff. We played together in Buffalo and Washington. You don't say that about very many teammates. <laughs> so Bowling Green goes back to it here. Leading by three, Grant Loy, who's been running the ball so well. Good pick up there to start the drive on first down. Falcons pick up a six there on this run. Watch the right guard and tight end pull. It's inside power. Well blocked again. That's the same play they ran on the first play of the game. And my mindset's always keep running it. Keep running that play until Toledo has an answer for it. Eight carries for 79 yards for Loy, trying to add to it here on his ninth carry, and he does. It's going to bring up third and short. A yard needed to convert here for Bowling Green. And they got to get this. They got to get it, and I would not be surprised. Look at that number at the bottom. You don't expect that, no. Keep your eye on quarterback run game. Him under center could easily be a quarterback sneak. Look how his left foot's back, too. Morris motioning. They turn and hand off. Davon Jones coming near side. Stiff arm, Davon Jones. First down run. Big pick up there on third down. Gutsy play call there to pull the backside guard, the right guard, Davon Jones, able to bounce it outside. Saeed Hole was supposed to be the edge defender. Look at that double stiff arm. Get some. You want some too? I'll give you some too. So he's got the stiff arm and the spin move down pat so far in this game. Yeah, he played a lot of Tecmo Bowl or Madden growing up. <laughs> I just dated myself with Tecmo Bowl. Madden, Madden, Madden. That's right. Swing it out to Davon Jones here. Trying to sidestep Holt. Saeed Holt, though, stays with him, wraps him up, and drops him down after a pickup of three. And this is why you need outside linebackers that look like Saeed Holt in college football. Six foot, 200, an outstanding running back in high school at Woodland Hills in Pittsburgh. He has been unbelievable. 8.2 tackles per game, four sacks. Here's Lloyd, open man, it's Quentin Morris, Morris on the move! And Bowling Green will move the chains again. So Quentin Morris, their top receiver, coming in at 26 for 310 and two touchdowns, here he is. And what did I tell you, Ben, on the bootleg yes. and the naked, they love Morris. He either comes across the formation or he just leaks out like that. But he's really the move tight end, the guy they throw the ball to Look, 83 Doris is on the line. Morris behind him is the guy that's more the move guy. Yeah, looked like the left side of that Bowling Green line moved. Ball start, offense, number 83. Five-yard penalty, first down. Not Morris, but Doris there that moved. He, he can't see when I circle him, can I? <laughs> I'm convinced he moved right when I circled him. I'm not kidding. The broadcast jinx. Right when I, right when I circled 83 Doris, he moved. I'm not going to say I did that, but I'm not going to say I didn't either. 
That was crazy. <laughs> Can you imagine if I had that kind of power? That would make this a really fun game. That would be, <laughs> yeah, that would be something. This, this guy's about to fall start right here. This guy's about to go for a touchdown. All kinds of questions <laughs> circulating if that were to happen. Out of the gun. Lloyd, open man, catch made. He gets some of it back. Bryson Denley, who had Bowling Green's touchdown earlier in his first, back in the first quarter, 66-yard reception. There's Samuel Womack, 11 PBUs, pass breakups on the year, leads the country. He had two his previous two years combined. And what I love about that, too, is you know who's second in the MAC comp, in the MAC? McDonald. Yep. The freshman out of Miami. Yeah, the, the, his fellow corner. Yep. They're one and two in the MAC in PBUs. Morris motion there. Loy looking left side. Fires, and it is caught. Julian Ortega Jones sliding down to make the grab there. It'll make the third down conversion attempt a little bit more manageable here. Mid range they're going to need. Looks like about six. And this is another situation where Scott Leffler should have a pretty good idea as to whether or not they would go for it on fourth down. They are with the wind right now. Which would enable them to keep, you know, try a further field goal attempt, but this is still too far. So this could easily be four down territory. Nine out of ten so far for Loy. Make it ten of eleven. They get it out there to space. And they get it. And it's a beautiful effort by Bryson Denley, who is having a monster day catching the ball with that speed. Speed kills, and it got Toledo right there. And the only way this happens, left side of your screen, watch the block by Ortega Jones, the receiver. The only way those little flare passes work is if you have wide receivers that are working. They don't like to block. They want to catch the ball, but you got to do the work. And how about Denley yes. putting his shoulder down? Yes, exactly. Love that. You know it's a rivalry game when you see that. Long with a run. Touchdown. Grant Lloyd, 15 yards into the end zone. Bowling Green with their second touchdown of the day. It's 16-7. Who is this Bowling Green team, and what has gotten into them? The quarterback run game, again, he's going to follow Morris around the edge. They seal the edge. Ortega Jones, 17 downfield yes. again with an outstanding block. And Loy waltzes into the end zone for the Falcons. Point after good from Needham. And it's again a 10-point lead for Bowling Green. Nine plays, 82 yards. Took four minutes and 38 seconds. And officially a 14-yard touchdown run from Grant Loy beating Khalil Robinson there at the end. Falcons on top of the Rockets by 10. We are back in Bowling Green. Let's take a look at how the Falcons got that touchdown. It was Quentin Morris leading around to seal the edge and the wide receiver Ortega Jones downfield. Run it, guys. Those guys had the two key blocks, and Loy fakes it and then goes down the alley. Terrific seal block by Morris. Ortega Jones again just locking up that corner downfield, and Scott Leffler's crew has come to play today. They have nine plays, 82 yards, 427. Loy with his second career rushing touchdown against Toledo. Had one in 2016 on November the 15th. How about Bryson Denley? Five catches, 96 yards. Had the 66-yard house call and had a 22-yarder on that scoring drive. Bowling Green just had. They have come to play, no doubt about it. And they lead Toledo by 10. I think you said it earlier in terms of the scoring differential, but they've been shut out a couple games. They had seven points one game and their oh. highest scoring game this year other than Morgan State, yeah. an FCS opponent, was 20 points in a 62-20 loss to Kent State. Coming in, they've been outscored 50-6. to six. Ball bouncing around. More trouble again for Toledo on the kickoff. And this one's going to be inside of the five-yard line. And Bowling Green down there surrounding the return man, Devin Maddox. He might be the fastest guy on their team, and he needed to be fast there to get on the ball. And the only reason Devin Maddox is out there is because Jones. Ronnie Jones muffed an earlier kickoff yeah. return. Maddox lost it in the sun. Yeah. He did not know where it was. Looks like a guy that doesn't spend that much time doing it. 
frankly, he's lucky he even secured the ball there right then. I mean, Bowling Green got awfully close to well, jumping on that. He's only got one. He does return punts for them, but he's only got one kick return this season. Out of the end zone now. Guadani once again, and we got a stoppage. So they're taking a look at this. Our replay official is Steve Ferjanic. Okay, so the ball touched him there. It's Where in did the he end touch zone. It? He picks it up, has it, tackled at the two. Yes. I'm not really sure what they could be looking at there. That seems pretty self-explanatory to me. Yeah. I mean, the only thing I can think it would be is making sure should... that's over the goal line. And making sure his knee didn't go down. Correct. Perhaps. But that does look good upon this look. Again, in the hands of our replay official, Steve Ferjanic. So the ball comes out. Ball's out there. Out of the end zone. Where's his foot, though? Picks it up. Unless I'm missing something, that play will stand. Play is then brought out. It's confirmed. First down, Toledo. Yep. Just wanted to be sure. And I don't see a thing wrong with that, especially in a game of this magnitude. Look at Leffler down there on the sideline getting the fans fired up. You know, it's funny because he told us yesterday <laughs> yeah. he doesn't love calling the game from the sideline. He prefers so being up, up top. in the press box because yeah. things go a little bit slower and it's more of a, a work environment, if you will. But with the energy and emotion, we should talk to him after the game today. I'm thinking right, right about now he's loving being on the sideline. Out of the end zone with Kovac next to him, Guadani. Guadani time, dumps off to Phillips at the five. And three orange hats. Right there, Caleb Rogers leading the charge. Jerry Roberts in there as well. A three and out would be humongous for Bowling Green here. If they can somehow find a way. Toledo has not really gotten that run game going, although this is typically a run set for them. Gilliam shifting in the backfield. Into the breadbasket of Kovac, and pressure, and they blow that play up. He's going to lose about a yard now. The Falcons fired up Jerry Roberts in there. Hagler in there as well. Great to see Roberts back in the game. He's going to come off the edge and just chase the play down. Yeah. He's got some serious wheels. They told us he's going to end up being a really good player. Yep. Off this edge right here, you're going to see him chase it down the backside. Roberts flies down the line because he knew he had support on the quarterback run. Third down and eight. Guadani over the middle. Catch May. They're going to be shy, though. They need to get out near the 13-yard line. Catch was made by Rossi, and you see the Bowling Green sideline hopping around over there. For good reason, punt group comes out for Toledo. Right, and that's one of those where you'll hear people, some analysts or even people watching the game say, well, why didn't he run that to the first down line? Well, because that's not what the route calls for. I mean, right. that, that route is a five-yard curl route, and you're hoping that he's not covered. You're hoping he's able to break a tackle. He wasn't. Nice job by Biggers. So here's Clucky, who had a 64-yard punt earlier, and they may have got a piece of this one. Goes out of bounds inside of the 35. Bowling Green getting every bounce and every break so far in this game. Under six minutes to go in the second quarter, and it's a 10-point lead for Bowling Green here in the battle of I-75. So Grant Loy, the quarterback for Bowling Green, having a monster day doing it with his arm and with his legs as well, Ross. Well, and that was the big play early in the game, the touchdown to Bryson Denley. This is the best I've seen Grant Loy play. He's been splitting time up until today yeah. with Darius Wade, but the way this game's going so far, I don't think he'll be splitting any time with Wade today. Career high and rushing. How about the passing? 10 for 11 for a buck 13 and the touchdown of 66. Short field after a 23-yard punt. 
Malloy trying to fight for the 30, but he's not going to get there. Shy of the 31-yard line. So a short field, a 10-point lead for Bowling Green here. Inside of six to go in the half. Yeah, I don't know about Bowling Green going with the hurry up here. I, I know that they feel like they've got Toledo on the run, and they're trying to keep the pedal to the metal. I respect that, but, man, it would be nice to churn some clock here on a scoring drive, too. Denley to deep back. They fake to him. Lloyd got some pressure coming. Flag's going to be a hold. And into the hands. Did he have it, though? The interception by McDonald. Penalty flag back at the 37. That's going to be a hold on Bowling Green. Rolling on the field is an incomplete pass. Holding offense number 75. 10-yard penalty, second down. Matt Tanner, the guilty one there. Tanner filling in at left guard for Sam Neveroff, the redshirt sophomore who typically starts there. Tanner started last week against Notre Dame as well. Tanner, a veteran guy, redshirt senior. We you know those seniors want this game in the worst way. They've never seen victory against Toledo. On the run, Loy, nice little play to get it to Morris. And Morris took a shot, gets it down inside of the 30 to the 29. Sets up a much more manageable third down here. Said earlier in the game, one of the keys for Toledo was to keep the Bowling Green quarterback in the pocket. They're not doing it. No. And watch Loy, a little flick there at the end. He stresses the defense by threatening the edge. They have to respect his run, and then he dumps it off. Third and six. On the sweep, Bryson Denley. And Denley still on his feet, battling. Bowling Green sideline. Gonna be about a yard and a half short, it looks. Denley's slow to get up. He was. Decision time here. What would you do? For Scott Leffler, I think I'd go for I it. I would too. I mean, you I are would. the heavy underdog in the yep. game, and you've been so successful with the quarterback run. I'm not sure I'd have Loy under center here. I'd like something where he's a threat with his legs. Morris shifting. Davon Jones, Davon Jones. I don't think he got I it. I don't either, based on the spot I'm seeing right now. No, he didn't get it, and they ran this. They tried to run the same play they ran earlier. Yeah. See Jamal Hines there, the defensive end for Toledo. Sophomore to Cincinnati, number 91, saying no. Nope. Leffler, disappointment on his face, and he's spitting fire on the sideline. So a huge stop for Toledo there late in the second quarter. So love the decision to go for it, but I don't love the play call because there's penetration there on Austin Doris, and it blows everything up in the backfield. It was the same play call they ran earlier. I just think when you have Loy running as well as he is, you have to have the quarterback be a threat on that play right there. So Toledo takes over on the turnover on downs. This is Seymour, left side. It's about four on the run. So Toledo down by 10. They've got all three of their timeouts. Plenty of time. 340 and counting left now here until halftime. See what Toledo's done. A fumble, a punt, then they scored. Punt it away again on their first four possessions. And they do get the ball at the start they of the do. second half. So they got a chance to have the daily double here if they can get a score here and again at the start of the second half. Not much doing there. Good job blowing that play up by the front there of Bowling Green. A host of brown jerseys in there. Brooks in there, the young man out of Lansing, Michigan. Sophomore played his high school ball at Lansing Sexton. Third and five coming up. Radani, big in him, dropped in the backfield. Lutman had a fumble recovery earlier in a big time play there to bring up fourth down for Toledo. They'll have to kick it away. And Nico Lutman.
Houghton is having the game of his life. Yes. Number 54. I mean, he's a defensive tackle, fifth-year senior. He's going against a double team. He split the double team right there between the center and the right guard. That should never, ever happen coming from a former offensive lineman, but Loudon has made a number of plays. The fifth-year senior is playing like this game. He's oh, it's blocked! The punt is blocked! They get to Clucky and block it! What an effort by Bowling Green! Inside of the 20, Bozeman got in there and blocked it! Bozeman came clean off the edge and I'm not sure I've ever seen one team have a more dominant first half in special teams I mean how many special teams miscues have there been now for Toledo at least four the two muffed kicks the shanked punt and now the block punt and I'm telling you Ben Bowling Green has to cash in here Jamari Bozeman, a redshirt senior out of West Palm Beach, Florida, has sent his team up as they give it off to Davon Jones. Toledo, great pursuit to the football. Bowling Green uh, with two minutes remaining in the half. Up 10, trying to add to it. As you pointed out on the last possession, Toledo does get the football. Jason Candle's team will get it when the third begins. Now they need to stop here. And I like Bowling Green taking their time here. Yeah. You definitely want to score, obviously. But worst case scenario right now, you want to go into the locker room up 10 if you're Bowling Green. Grant Loy. Got time. Trying to slide intercepted. Intercepted by Toledo. How's that for coming up with a big play? Ball down. And the bodies. Hitting the deck. No signal yet from the officials. Intercepted by Womack. And there's the indication. Toledo gets back on the football. So the Rockets get a huge turnover. They needed that thing big time. As Sam Womack comes up with a pick. His second of the season. Minute 15 remaining until halftime. And Davon Jones, he's hobbling off a little bit. As Bryson Denley. First down Toledo. Timeout. Bryson Denley also left a few moments ago. Their other running back. They're already without Andrew Clare. Late stages of the second quarter. Loy delivers. Womack says, I don't think so. Big interception for the Rockets. They've got it when we come back. A little more than a minute until we reach halftime. And coming up on the halftime report powered by Ram Trucks. Make sure you stick around and join our friends Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, and Brian Jones. They'll get you ready for an exciting afternoon in college football and evening of college football from our studio in New York. Jason Candle's team coming up with an interception by Sam Womack. Much needed. Bowling Green got to the punt, blocked it. Had great field position. Now the Rockets with three timeouts and a little over a minute trying to get something on the board. It's Guadani. Tough run out of Mitch Guadani. And Guadani has the first down. And that extra effort got him the first down, which stops the clock until they move the chains. Moving now with 55 seconds and counting. Three TOs for the Rockets. This is Kovac. You know this Ross from having played in these type of games. And Scott Leffler said it's usually the cleanest, most physical game you play all year in these rivalry games. Hardest hitting, but also the cleanest. And Toledo's kind of taking their yeah. time. They're not using timeouts. I'm surprised. I'm really surprised. With Donnie. Floats it. Nice throw. Nice catch by Rossi over midfield. And inside of Bowling Green territory. They're going to spot him inside of the 45, it looks like. 
And a timeout taken by Toledo with 15 seconds remaining until halftime. We'll step aside for a quick timeout. Be right back. There's the freshman, Evan Davis, career long, 46 yards. That was in their opener down at Kentucky after a 37 yard pickup by Rossi. Ball at the Bowling Green, 44 for Mitch Guadani and company. Checks off over the middle to Kovac. Good pickup there. High tackle. Flags come in. That can't happen if you're Bowling Green. That's going to be 15 yards and clearly will put Toledo in field goal range now with eight seconds to go in the half. That's the difference between a field goal attempt and not. Yeah. And they're discussing whether or not he was inside the face mask or not. Personal foul, face mask, defense. 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, automatic first down. By rule, the clock will start on the snap. Here's a look back, Ross. Take a look. It looked like Jerry Roberts, yep. number 33, came in. And the shame of it is he didn't need to do that because he had a couple of buddies right there. With the right, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, he got it. He really got it. That's a shame because they didn't need that, and it would have been debatable whether or not Toledo would have had a chance to get a field goal attempt off. Now they're going to be able to maybe go to the end zone once and then kick a field goal. Well, Scott Leffler decided to take a timeout. And I think he's telling those guys, Ben, exactly what I just mentioned, which is they're taking a shot at the end zone. Because if you're Toledo... There's really no point in doing anything else, right? right? I mean, right, you have eight right. seconds. Yeah. At most, you're going to get two more plays here. Throwing the ball, I guess if you throw the ball 10, 15 yards, you can call timeout and get a closer field goal. But I think that's unlikely. I, I think that they're going to go to the end zone here. And if they don't get a touchdown, then they kick the field goal well, on second down. If they get nothing, you're looking at a 37-yard attempt into the wind for Candle's kicker. Evan Davis, the freshman out of Shelby, North Carolina. They have not connected with Bryce Mitchell yet. He's their big play guy at the bottom of the screen. Keep uh, your eye on number 80. Bowling Green's playing way off. Yes. They're playing six defense on the end line. Seven back on the goal line. They'll rush just four. Here's the run. Kobach. Kobach down near the five. And they got to be quick here. And with a second left, they get the timeout, I believe. They wow. do. That was precision. I, I don't really <laughs> understand that. In terms of getting the time, I'll call that. Well, well, no, my point is there's a risk there. I mean, if they, time. if they hold him up a little bit longer, yep. you know, if he doesn't go down right there, the clock runs out. Take a look at the clock, bottom left. Yep. I mean, this was close here, and all you really did was get a little bit of a closer field goal attempt. Probably should have been able to call timeout with two seconds left. So that's fine. They put they put a second back on. So Evan Davis will try this one inside of the right hash. Good snap, good hold, and Davis, no good. Bowling Green, another massive play on special teams, and the Falcons. Top of Toledo at the half. 5 10. It was blocked by Leffler's guys. They blocked the punt. They blocked the field goal. The first time Bowling Green has had a lead over Toledo since halftime of 2011. That's the end of the half. Bowling Green 17, Toledo 7. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network. College football here on CBS Sports Network, proudly presented by the Home Depot. What a beautiful day here in Northwest Ohio in the battle of I-75. Bowling Green on top by 10. And it's a 100-year celebration of football here this weekend. That is members from the 1959 Bowling Green team. A ton of tradition, great history here. They've had some incredible coaches come through here. So welcome upstairs. To our broadcast position, Ross Tucker, Ben Holden, Justin Walters will join us on the field 
What a half. What? Who's this Bowling Green team? Well, and this is what I love about football. No matter what your rooting interest is, you never know right. what's going to happen. This is why they actually play the games. It was an incredible first half. Unbelievable first half. Special teams for Bowling Green. I mean, they should get the five stars right now, I would think. But we'll get into that as we move along. We get a look at our Chick-fil-A game summary. What grabs your eyes the very most? Well, the thing that they highlighted, the average drive start. Toledo with two muffed field goals, or, or kickoff returns, I should say, twice got it inside their own five. So the two muffed kickoffs, those two drives you mentioned, partner. Blocked field goal, blocked punt, 23-yard muff punt. The wind is strong, as you can see, as Mason Lawler, who handles their kickoffs, Needham's their place kicker, Ronnie Jones, who had trouble with two of those, one of those kickoffs. And he is back deep to the far side of the field. Scott Leffler, first-year head coach, been coaching for over 25 years. Coordinator and assistant, first time he's been the head coach. A product of this great state of Ohio as Jones takes it inside of the five and gets it out, looks like, across the... 20-yard line, return of 21. Down to Justin Walters for updates on both teams. Justin. Then Bowling Green head coach Scott Leffler's message to the team is that you have 30 minutes of pure hell left. He likes what he saw from his team in the first half, but thinks that they missed out on two huge scoring opportunities. As for the Rockets, Toledo coach Jason Candle said they have played about the worst 30 minutes they could have played, but this game is still young. They didn't fold or break. All right, thanks, Justin. Yeah, and they're down 10. They're down two scores in this ball game. As they go to work here, from the 22, fake the callback. Desmond Phillips the grab, trying to find some space, and does, and just trots out of bounds over the 35-yard line to about the 37 pickup of 15 yards on the pitch and catch there. Toledo going right on the football with tempo. This is what they like to do. They've been, in, unlike Bowling Green, they've been in a bunch of close games this year. They will not be phased. Very good point. Colback. The screen to him. Colback moving his feet. And Brian Colback, good pick up there. They're going to give him nine. Second and short upcoming. Toledo four and one overall. One and all in the back. Bowling Green one and four as Colback hobbles off. Empty set a lot of times means quarterback run. Then they go to Seymour near side. Shaquille Seymour over the midfield strike gets the first down to the 48-yard line of Bowling Green. See Kobach on the end of that last play. Oh, his Ouch. leg. Never like seeing that. No. Toledo came in the second highest scoring team in the MAC as Kobach goes off. They've thrown three straight passes. The Rockets averaging close to almost 34 points a game, 33.8 to be precise. That was Gilliam, the tight end in motion. Ladani into the hands of Seymour. Dropped inside of the 45-yard line. They're going to spot him down at the 44. The Rockets showing some giddy-up in their game now. You see Kobach being taken in for further evaluation and and the one thing that seems clear is the adjustment for Toledo at halftime was to throw the ball well they've thrown it four straight times three straight to running backs go back and see more of those guys bottom of your screen the dangerous Bryce Mitchell Seymour up the gut drags the tackler just over the 40 yard line It'll be third and short for the Rockets. And you would think this is absolutely four-down territory for Toledo going into the wind. And we haven't seen a lot of design quarterback runs from Godani, the quarterback, yet. Off to Seymour again. And Seymour, it's going to depend on the spot. I think he's a little short at first glance. That was my thought as well. And they're saying it fourth down. Yeah. And Toledo, they're going to go for this. What an opportunity for Bowling Green here if they could somehow come up with a stop. They're going for it on fourth and short. With Donnie. They don't get it. Seymour took the handoff and Bowling Green absolutely blew it off. Turnover on Downs. The Falcons get it back. Wow. That was
was like a party in the backfield and <laughs> everybody was invited. Look at this. <laughs> Look at all the brown and orange in there. Nico Loughton in number 54 again. Brandon yes. Purse number one. These red shirt seniors have worked so hard for this opportunity, frankly, to even be in a close game against Toledo, let alone have a 10 point lead. Unreal. Scott Leffler's guys, first down and 10 from their own 42, Ross. We mentioned the opportunity they had on fourth down there. And a timeout taken. By Leffler and his guys, and you can see he is not happy. And 12 15 remaining here in the third quarter, and both teams are going to talk it over. We'll step aside. Quick timeout here from Bowling Green, Ohio, with a battle of I 75. Bowling Green up by 10. Well, for Toledo, the miscues on special teams, two muff kickoffs. They've started drives inside of their two twice. Block field goal, block punt, muff punt. It's been a disaster on special teams. And then they just had fourth and in inches. And like I said, there were three Bowling Green Falcons in the backfield. So you look at what Jason Campbell's team well, more didn't do than what they did do. The touchdown, four, touchdown drive, 14 plays and 75, but other than that. And even that wasn't easy. No. And it took a perfect pass from Guadani under duress. Let's see if Bowling Green gets back to that quarterback run game. That's Denley in motion. Denley's got it. Denley, the speedster, breaks away! And Denley picks up the first down, a gain of 12. He was dinged up in the first half, but Comes in there and makes a play. Still look like he's moving a little slow, but the run, he didn't look so much slow. He just pointed to his left shoulder, too. Again, look at the blocking. Oh, man. Quentin You're Morris. loving that. De <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that live. Quentin Morris with a heck of a block downfield, and Bowling Green is missing a guy right now. They better hurry up. I think Denley was supposed to be out there, but was pointing to his left shoulder. Well, Jordan Wayne Prather, number four there, who goes in motion, comes on. He's got the rock now, tucked under the left arm, and he is wrapped up and dropped there. Gain of four. That's a big loss, by the way, if Denley can't come back in. You're not kidding it is. He's on a monster day. He has been electric, especially on those jet sweeps, and even that one. Yep. That's one where he should have ran out. said, take a look at the la end of that play. He pointed to his left shoulder when he stood up from there. Yeah. So second and seven. And this is Loy. Loy in the first half. 86 rushing yards, 145 passing, and a career-long 66-yard pass. And there's Kobach making his way back, stretching those legs out. Bowling Green's last three starting field positions. Toledo's 33, Toledo's 17. They turn it over on downs. They were picked on the second one. This drive began at their own 42. Lloyd's got a man wide open! Did he make the catch? Yes! Beautiful job getting down to get that off the turf by the Indiana grad transfer, Austin Doris. There was nobody near him. Oh, he caught it. He did. He caught that. If it's not Morris, it's Doris. I don't think that ball hit the ground. I don't either. Certainly they'll be looking at this and are looking at it. A replay official is Steve Perjanic. That's one that they got to take another look at. Have to. He got underneath that. He got his right elbow and arm underneath that. Yeah, it looked at certainly did on that other angle Tom Stapleton our referee and now the whistles halting play you know there was nobody near Doris no. uh, if if Lloyd throws that ball earlier and is more accurate it's a walk-in touchdown you are right about that that, that was a missed opportunity by Loy. Let's, let's watch. You know what? 
great zoom there yes. by our camera work. And now, now it has me wondering if there's enough to overturn it. I still think he caught it, but just watch. Man, it's really subtle. Really tough to if tell. It, it's really subtle if it does touch the ground, but it still seemed to me his right arm was around it. Like his right arm got underneath it. But look, to me, that looks like it bounced off his bicep. Over delay again. Bowling Green is challenging the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass. There you go, and that's what it was called. And that is absolutely a worthwhile challenge by Scott Leffler. And I'm a little surprised he had to challenge it and that they didn't just buzz down on that one. Yeah. So Stapleton on the headset with the replay communicator. The replay official is Steve Ferjanic. As we'll continue to look through the replays that we have. I mean, that's a Terri me. Terrific zoom there. And the more we zoom and look at it, yeah. the more I think they're not going to be able to overturn it. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I still think he might have caught it there off his bicep, but I don't think they're going to be able to overturn it. That is terrific cam work, and I'm so glad we have that zoom. Tape room bringing us that. When it was live, I thought it bounced. But then after the first time we looked at it, I thought he caught it because the bounce is so quick. There we go. I don't see how you overturn that. Yeah, I don't either based on that. I think the ruling on the field is really confirmed. There After it is. After review, the ruling on the field of an incomplete pass is confirmed. Yep. Bowling Green will be charged with a timeout. And Bowling Green will have no further challenges in the game. Fourth down. So Bowling Green's only got one timeout left. Remember, they had to take one. A little more than 12 minutes left. So they lose the timeout. One remaining here early in this third quarter. He was wide open. He was. And that is a missed opportunity. And, and they're going to punt it yep. and try to pin him deep. And the way the defense is playing, fourth and a long three. I think this is the right decision here. Man, that's a missed opportunity. Oh. He's wide open. Yep, that's a walk-in touchdown if that ball hits him. And he's standing up. Matt Narano on. Flag flies. Unbelievable. Wow. But they hadn't snapped the ball. I think it might be against Bowling Green. Ball start. Offense number one. Five yard penalty is fourth down. Leffler up in arms. Benefit him in any way. They back him up a little bit. Gives him a little, little more room to and work it, with, right? It was definitely worth a shot for yeah. Bowling Green. They lose almost nothing and almost gained a lot. So we'll see if Narano can pin Toledo. Good punt. They get down there, but he booted it into the end zone the wind kind of pushed that it's coming out of the south as the Falcons going south to north now so Toledo has it when we come back still trailing by 10 here in the battle of I-75 college football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by the General Insurance get a free anonymous online quote now by Reese's Peanut Butter Cubs and by the Ram 1500, Motor Trends 2019 Truck of the Year. All the coaches that have coached, some of the coaches that have coached in this rivalry, and they all pictured had great success. Of course, Nick Saban at Toledo in 90. There's Dave Clawson having a great year at Wake Forest. Let's not forget Dino Babers, who had some good years here and now at Syracuse. So Toledo with it. And after the touchback on the punch, Keith Seymour from the 20-yard line. Left side, good pick up there. On an eight-yard gain, close to it. They're going to give him eight on the first down run for Seymour. All right, Kovac dinged earlier in this third quarter. Seymour remains in the game. They're the one-two punch. And running back for Toledo, 
regardless of the day. Seymour, a little shake and bake there, and he's able to get the first down. And a pick up a three for Shaquif Seymour. Five touchdown game for him. In this very, rivalry. very late yeah. flag here. Two years ago here in Bowling Green. Let's see what Stapleton has to say about this. Result of the play is a first down. Dead ball, personal foul, defense number eight. 15 yards, automatic first down. And is on red shirt senior defensive end David Konowalski. Scott Leftor talked about how these rivalry games are usually the cleanest played games. You can't have that. I didn't see it, but whatever it was, can't happen. Seventh penalty for 64 yards against Bowling Green. From the 46 with Donnie to Gilliam, Reggie Gilliam. The pick up there on first down, five yards. Gilliam, six career punt blocks. He is a Swiss Army knife for Toledo, does everything for them. Doesn't catch it a lot. Special teams guy, blocks, does everything really well. Former walk-on running back. Yeah. You don't yep. hear that very often. Move to tight end. He's an Army brat. His father is still a master sergeant of the U.S. Army. Guadani under pressure, and he escapes. Got a ton of green grass. Mitch Guadani still moving inside of the 20. First and 10, Toledo. So when you blitz from the second level like Bowling Green did, if you don't get there, watch purse comes, they blitz, both linebackers blitz, it's picked up, then there's going to be a huge hole. And it's all kinds of green when both linebackers blitz like that and they get picked up because there is no second level of the defense to go and rally the ball and make the tackle. 31-yard pickup for Guadani. Three wide. Check off over the middle. And again, it's Gilliam. Physical, physical game. Yeah, you would expect it to run. Gilliam, Gilliam, Gilliam took some shots. And a good pick up there. 6'1", 255. He's built for that. Oh. Lautman in there on the play. He's had a monster day. Flag flies. Play stopped. Going to back up Toledo. Offense number 14. Not everyone was set. Five-yard penalty, second down. So we're talking him up, but Gilliam gets the flag for the penalty there, Ross. Yeah, I'm blaming you for that one. Well, I'm blaming you. I took the one where I circled <laughs> Doris earlier in the game. He, that's you for over-talking Gilliam. Ah, I'm not buying that. <laughs> This is callback, back in the game. Not much there, good job up front. Robertson Person there. Look at Person's helmet. Person's just a tackling machine. He is. 47 coming into the day. Yep. He had 15 tackles against Kent State. Terrific job by Roberts and Purse, both knowing their leverage. Roberts is outside, he wants to use his right shoulder. Purse is inside, wants to use his left shoulder and funnel the back into your, your buddy. Third and six. Call back to the right of Guadani. Blitz coming! They got him! Brought the heat. Jordan Anderson gets Guadani. And he was slow to get up. It was a delayed blitz from the third level. Watch the safety come flying. Anderson comes flying up. You never are accounting for the safety in pass protection. You might have a linebacker you're looking at, but you're not looking at the safety coming from the third level like that. Terrific design by Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator for Bowling Green. So a 41-yard field goal attempt for Evan Davis. And Davis... The special teams troubles continue for the Rockets. They come up empty on that drive with 6.48 to go in the quarter. And Bowling Green continues to lead by 10.
Moved right, came back left. Didn't get it. Jason Candle's guy still down by 10 here in Bowling Green. Ten-point game, 6.48 to go in the third. On the left, that is Carter Bradley getting loose during our break. Mitch Guadani went into the Toledo tent as it's kept here by Grant Loy. Look at Loy out near midfield. What a clinic he's putting on. First down to the 50-yard line. Same play. They don't have an answer for it. I mean, the right guard's pulling, and there's nobody there. They've only run that play three or four times. It's been huge holes. They should just keep running it. I would. Loy came into this game rushing, had 20 carries for 87 yards. He's got 115 today, flagged down. They blow this play dead as it was caught out there by Davon Jones, but we'll have to check the penalty flag. So reset here. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 55. Five-yard penalty, first down. And Caleb Bright. Caleb Bright over here, right side of your screen. Yep, yep. They got him. Mm -hmm. And he's actually their best offensive lineman. Please set the game clock to 621, please. Six he's probably a more natural offensive guard but he's from urbandale iowa i feel like they just make i feel like iowa is just a, yes. a factory of offensive yes. linemen the guys that play for the hawkeyes and come here to play for bowling green yep fake it to jones loy's got it adding to his rushing total as he approaches 120 118 now first 100 yard rusher bowling green has had this season and you know what? They didn't show a ton of quarterback run stuff on tape, especially against Notre Dame. Right. It was very little. It was mainly screens and bootlegs. They didn't show a lot of these quarterback powers and counters that they've run so far today. Davon Jones in motion. They fake to him. Loy tries it again. Toledo was ready for that. Lucky if he got back to the line of scrimmage. A minimal loss maybe, but... Give hand with a good play there for the Rockets up front. And that one was a call and run it play. He didn't have the ability to read it and give the ball to Davon Jones because if he did, he would have. Now, this is a situation where you want to have a somewhat conservative play call here if you're Scott Leffler, especially with the win. Maybe a screen draw. Third and 12. Instead, Lloyd taking a shot. Catch made! Unbelievable. They go for it, and it's Julian Ortega Jones Ross. Or instead, you just instead you throw a stop fade. Wow. Receiver with less than 10 catches on the season oh. who's being covered by one of the best man-to-man -man corners in the conference. Left side of your screen, it's a back shoulder throw. Ortega Jones has been tremendous blocking, and that time he got a chance to catch one. A 26-yard pickup, and that played in full Toledo. Lloyd tackled. Shy of the 25-yard line, brings up second down, and... A long nine. Yeah, Ortega Jones came in with just eight catches. Was second on their team, 118 in yards. And there goes Mitch Guadani, the starting quarterback for Toledo. They are taking him into the locker room. Wow. And you hate to see that. Yeah. Because he's had several injuries during his career. He has. He's been tremendous when he's been on the field. Yep. Officially second and ten. Loy fires. Open man caught. And it's RB Marlowe the third. And the third's got a first down. I feel like if your first name's RB, you shouldn't play wide receiver. <laughs> I mean, I knew that was coming. RB Marlowe, and he's playing wide receiver. Really good protection again. Here's a toss to Davon Jones. Jones puts his shoulder into the defender there and Takes the football down to the 13-yard line. And I know there's a lot of time left, Ben, but yeah. especially with a backup quarterback coming in, that number down there, that yep. clock, very, very important. Yep. As many plays as you can run where that thing keeps on ticking, 
the better. You are the heavy underdog in a rivalry game. You want to score, you want more points, but you want to keep that clock moving, too. Empty backfield, Lloyd. Denley, Denley inside of the 10. He's had a huge day catching the football, has Bryson Denley. Redshirt junior out of the state of Texas. Saeed Holt's not happy. He feels like he was being held there. How about that, what they've done the last five games. They had 154 at Kent State in their other MAC game, but today, getting it done, Denley's over 100 yards receiving as well. Loy, a little roll out, open man off the hands of Denley. Could have been dangerous. Holt was way back down the end zone in coverage. Nearest rocket to it. And even if he catches that, I think that they tackle him in a short of the line of game. And that's one where they didn't, they weren't able to keep the clock moving. Denley goes off, field goal group comes on. Huge field goal attempt here to make it so that it's a 13-point game, and Toledo would need two touchdowns to take the lead. So Nate Needham coming into the ball game was just one of four on the season. 26-yard attempt. And Needham knocks it through. 20 to 7 Bowling Green now with less than three to go. Scott Leffler's Bowling Green Falcons 13-point lead against the team that's beaten them nine straight years. Tomorrow it's an NFL on CBS doubleheader with most of you heading to Kansas City for a clash between two of the game's most dynamic young quarterbacks as Mahomes and the Chiefs. Welcome Watson and the Texans in, followed by the Jets, led by the return of Sam Darnold, hosting the Cowboys. All begins with JBA and the crew on the NFL today at noon Eastern on CBS. Yeah, look at those two guys, Deshaun Watson Stunts. and Patrick Mahomes. If you're a Bears fan, I don't recommend watching that game <laughs> because <laughs> they could have drafted either one of those quarterbacks Whoops. instead of Mitch Trubisky. Whoops. I think Mitch Trubisky's fine, but he, he's not them. He's no. not Deshaun Watson and Patrick Mahomes. That game is going to be electric. There should be a lot of points in that one. This ball game has Bowling Green on top by 13. Ronnie Jones back deep, waiting the kick of Mason Lawler. 2.44 to play in the third. 84th all-time meeting. Teams first played in early October of 1919 as they celebrate 100 years of football here at Bowling Green. And Jones not even going to mess with that. He couldn't anyways. It was into the back of the end zone. They'll have it first and 10 from the 25 here with no Mitch Guadani for the time being. Yeah, that means we're going to see Carter Bradley, the yep. redshirt freshman, from Jacksonville, Florida. He is former Jags head coach mm -hmm. Gus Bradley's son. He played a little bit against Kentucky when Guadani went down. He does not run as well as Guadani. He can run a little bit, but he has a big time, big time arm. And he had scholarship offers from Ole Miss and some SEC schools. So a different look now for the Rockets. Seven of eight throwing it this season for 126 yards. And he gives off here. They keep it on the ground with Kobach. Bryant Kobach, first on run, pickup of 11. So Kobach, good to see if you're a Toledo fan. He's back into the game. He had to leave the game earlier in the quarter. He's returned. It's just so crazy. You never know what's going to happen in a game with injuries, yep. with special teams, oh. and turnovers. What a wild, wild contest. Been crazy so far. Again, Colback. Good, tough run out of Brian Colback. Came in as the max top rusher. 126 a game. Gets eight there. Fourth in the country coming in with that number. It's almost like with Carter Bradley being in the game, the offensive line realizes they need to take over two just inside zone runs to the right for big yardage. Yep, inside of two to go. I had to loosen the tie, Tucker. It's <laughs> going down to the wire. This one's been fun. Out of the gun. Bradley going to fling one up there. Phillips broken up. Broken up by Jordan Anderson. Third and two upcoming for Toledo. He is going to be a heck of a player. Yeah, he Watch is. 18 come in. He's a true 
freshman. Where is he from? Harper Woods, Michigan. <laughs> the state that Ben Holden created, evidently. <laughs> no, but he had the sack on the last drive. And now he makes that play in space for a true freshman. He is very, very impressive. Third and two. You have to imagine Toledo is going to lean on that offensive line. Unbalanced offensive line. They have three offensive linemen to the right of the center. Here goes Colback, and he's green, and it goes nowhere. It was Carl Brooks, the defensive end, the sophomore, just waiting for him. They tried to trick him by putting the left tackle, Mitch Berg, over, and he whiffed. Unbelievable. You love that matchup of your offensive tackle on their defensive end. And Mitch Berg, watch right here at the bottom of your screen. He just whiffs. Brooks gives him the old ole. <laughs> they had the matchup they wanted. So Clucky's on to punt. Jake Rogers awaiting it. Fair catch called for. And it'll be downed inside of the 25 here by Toledo's punt coverage team with 54 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And a 13-point deficit facing that team there, Toledo. Time now to take a look at our AP poll powered by Ram Trucks. And you got Bama and AM coming up on CBS at 3.30. Thoughts on the rest of it? Well, at AM too. Yeah. At Kyle Field. That is no joke. That's a Brad Nestler, Gary Danielson special. That's right. How about Georgia? Trailing South Carolina right now. Uh -oh. LSU, Florida should be awesome. Oklahoma, Texas is a mm. good ball game. Yeah. By far the best Saturday of college football so far this season, including this game, the battle of I-75. It's been a battle, all right. Davon Jones, big hole. Jones, good effort out of him. Picks up a six-yard run there for Davon Jones. Transferred in from Boston College, was there with Scott Leffler when he was their offensive coordinator. Terrific job again by Morris, the tight end. And the linebacker, number 45, for Toledo, he just overran it. Deontay Johnson. Yep. Again, they feed Davon Jones, and I keep feeding him. First down, Bowling Green, 13-yard gain. And they can take this to the yep. fourth quarter now. And they are now winning the battle of the trenches. What a cutback by Davon Jones on the outside zone. And Bowling Green, the Falcons are winning the battle up front right now. Who would have thunk it? The ultimate reality TV. You never know what's going to happen in sports. I love it. Scott Leffler's guys are 15 minutes away. If they can get it done, four fingers in the air. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Bowling Green 20, Toledo 7. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network presented by the Home Depot. Welcome back here to Bowling Green. Up on the marquee are Geico Difference Makers. It has been a career day in every sense for Grant Lloyd. Grant Lloyd throwing the ball. He's been excellent, but rushing 120 yards on the ground and those two touchdowns, one through the air, one running. And how about Bryson Denley? He's got a career high in receptions and yards. Take a look at some of the key plays we've seen in this ball game from these guys. We'll get an opportunity to do that in a moment. I feel like Oprah. You get a career high, and you get a career high, and you get a career high. That is Ross Tucker. My name is Ben Holden. Justin Walters down on the field. Tom Wicks, our producer. John Coleman, our director. Brian Kozlowski, our associate director today. And all of our crew as Denley comes near side. Denley puts his shoulder into the defender. And charges forward. And they're giving him the first down. It looks, or are they not? No, they're not. Just, yeah, they are. Now they're moving it. Some confusion on the field there. Now they're moving the stick. So a first down run for Denley. How about Loy? Grant Loy has accounted for 305 of their 378 yards through three quarters. This is Davon Jones. Jones. Good run there out of him. Six-yard pickup on first down for Bowling Green. Davon Jones, a Boston College transfer. 
got to think he's loving this, getting an opportunity to play in a huge game. Bounces outside again to tight ends. Quentin Morris is having the game of his life, number 80. I could just watch him every play. Watch, watch number block. 80, whether it's blocking or receiving. Yep. He's playing out of his mind. Loy turns and feeds Davon Jones once again. Tripped up. It's going to be third and short coming up. Davon Jones, three years he played at Boston College, as you mentioned, Ross. He was not only a running back, he played linebacker and running back in the same season. He's a two-way guy in college. You don't see that very often. No, you don't. Third and two here. What do you look for? A little surprised they're taking him out. My guess is it's either Denley on the jet sweep or Loy pulls it okay. and takes it himself. Loy. Nobody open. Doesn't want to take the sack. Gets away. He's using his leg. Shoved out of bounds. Shot delivered over there. But he's got the first down. Does Grant Loy? The career day continues. And that is huge. Every first down at this point is extremely valuable. Childress yeah. gives him a heck of a shot, but Loy knows what's at stake. And credit to him for not throwing the pass. It wasn't open, and he also didn't take the sack. Fresh set of downs here as we approach 13 remaining in the game. Davon Jones puts his head down, burrows forward for about two and a half on the carry. Andrew Clare, they told us yesterday, the Bowling Green staff, you asked them what spot they felt best about offensively as a group. They said running back when Claire's healthy, he's right. not able to go today. But the other guy, yes. Davon Jones and, and Henley. Bryce and Henley have really picked up the slack. Denley, I'm, my apologies. Bryce and Denley's had a big day. And trying to go to Morris there, incomplete. And the pass brings up third down now for Loy in the Falcon offense. And I know what they're thinking there, that Toledo will be selling out for the run. Loy's kind of walking a little bit weird ever since that run where he got hit out of bounds. Yeah, my Childress. So third and nine now. Toledo trying to come up with a stop. Trailing by 13. Pressure coming, he throws it away. It's the big boy up front, Devin Rogers, is in his kitchen. And that's tough to have back-to-back -back plays right there. The official wanted to say something, but that's tough to have back-to-back -back plays where you don't really run very much clock. So the offense heads off. And they're gonna bring on the punter, Matt Naranjo. He tried this earlier and kicked it into the end zone. Yep. Keep your eye on number 14, Reggie Gilliam, wherever he is. With all the block kick punts, it doesn't look like they're coming after this one, though. Six career block kicks in his career, and this one, a coffin corner special. They spot it out at the four-yard line. Into the wind, and Naranjo does his job very well. Toledo's got it when we come back. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Buy Chick-fil-A. Try their grilled nuggets for a bite-sized backyard taste of the grill on the go. And by Lily Diabetes. That is Doit Perry. Man, the stadium's named after played here. 29 to 31. He coached under Woody and Bo at Ohio State. He was the Falcons head coach from 55 to 64. 77, 11 and five record, five MAC titles. He is a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, inducted in 88. Kobach in there, 13 carries, 56 yards. Third drive, Toledo has started inside of their own five. Bradley takes a shot, receiver never looked. It was Mitchell, the intended target. Rockets averaging 471 yards a game. They're currently at 314. 
Bryce Mitchell's their big play threat. He didn't really turn the Jets no. on. I, I think he saw Caleb Biggers was playing off coverage and just thought, well, he's not going to throw it to me. I can't get a step on him. You're talking about a guy that's seventh in the FBS, 24.3 yards perception, had 119 yards last week on just four catches. Three huge losses in that department from last year's team for Toledo, the receiver department. Blitz coming, Bradley got away from it and gets a little bit of breathing room. Good job by Carter Bradley there to elude the sack of the end zone. Love the delayed blitz call again. You'll see Purse come, and Bradley sees it. He's a bigger guy, just able to spin out of it and get positive yardage to give them a chance here on third down. That could have been disaster. You're not kidding. I think he really surprised Purse with that spin move. Huh. Third and six. Five wide for the Rockets. That was Kovac, the running back, shifting out wide. Four-man rush, tipped, and caught! Caught by Toledo. Desmond Phillips, great concentration. Someone got a paw on it, but it's still reeled in by Phillips. Wow, now that's a break right there yeah. for Toledo, and they needed it. First down as a result on the deflection into the waiting hands of Desmond Phillips. Bradley, they get him! Lautman in there again, Ross. He has been all over the place. Look at that helmet. You talk about a rivalry game. Nico Lautman has come to play. Two sacks and a fumble recovery. Yeah, they ran a twist on the left side. That was the play before that got tipped right there. And this time they run a twist. And look at Lautman fighting through Kobach as well as Brooks. <laughs> You have to be happy for that redshirt senior from Mentor, Ohio. And arguably the biggest game of his life. He's having the game of his life. Three sacks on the season now. Bradley gives off. Kovac up the gut. Uh, near the 20. Spot him at the 19. Top rusher in the back coming in. Fourth in the country, Brian Kovac. Bowling Green is kept him in check to this point but he's a dangerous guy can break one at any time third and long huge play here Bryce Mitchell at the top of the screen you can see Bowling Green's fired up top of the screens Bryce Mitchell they're playing way off and soft you should be able to get a first down on a little stop right at the marker pressure coming Bradley trying to get away from it flag down Bradley takes a shot out of bounds into the Toledo bench area. It's a hold against Toledo. I would imagine they would decline that. Scott Leff was just making sure how far away it would be to see what fourth down would be. Right. Wants to have an idea of whether or not he thinks Toledo would go for it. Tom Stapleton, our referee. Mitchell Berg called for the holding penalty as we look back. They brought the heat again. Berg's the left tackle right there. And right there. Well, that's kind of a weak holding penalty if that's what they called right there on Berg. Julian material because they declined it anyway. They did. Clucky boots it downfield. Bouncing inside of the 45-yard line. Rodgers just gets away from it. And the Rockets down it at the 26-yard line. Trailing by 13. 9.24 to play in the ball game. The battle of I-75. Toledo's won the last nine, but they're in a hole right now. It's a beautiful picture here, mid-October here in Northwest Ohio. Two teams separated by 25 miles. Take a look back at a very memorable moment for Bowling Green. They took on Jordan Lynch, heavily favored in 14th ranked Northern Illinois in the 2013 MAC Championship game. Matt Johnson.
five touchdowns on the day as Dave Clawson and his guys got it done. They won their first conference title that year in 21 years. Back to it here. Falcons have the football. They're close to a first down on the run, a gain of nine. And it's the big boy, Davon Jones, who's been bruising and banging his way through that defense all day. And with Toledo having a backup quarterback in there, yeah. and the way Bowling Green's running the football, I don't think I put the ball in the air again today. Mm -hmm. I want that clock spinning after every single snap. Yep. The defense has done the job. Toledo looks like they're going the rest of the way with a backup quarterback. I'm not calling any play where that clock stops. And certainly not here on second and one. Down to three, two, and they snap it. There it is to Davon Jones. Davon Jones head down. He's got the first down. Picks it up by about the length of the football. So Toledo's won nine straight in this series. Last win for Bowling Green. Most of these guys were about 10 years old. It was 2009. A 38-24 win here. And what's crazy about that is think about, I mean, they had Dave Clawson. They had Dino Bain. Dino, yeah. We just showed 2013 yeah. they're winning MAC championships. Right. But they couldn't beat Toledo. Right. And Scott Leffler doing a nice job here with the play clock right there. You should not snap it until there's five seconds or less. On three they go again. They fake the Jones. Lloyd who's had a career day in every facet of his game. Throwing it, running it. He has been outstanding. He's went the distance here for Scott Leffler's squad here today. What a great first down play. Are you kidding me? Seven yards on first down when the opponent knows you're trying to run the clock out. I mean, if you're Toledo right now, you got to sell out. You cannot let them get six, seven yards a clip. They're going to take the play clock down below five every time. This is terrific clock management for Scott Leffler, who even told us that that was easier when he was up in the booth. Yeah. For Michigan and Boston College and yep. Virginia Tech and Auburn and everywhere Florida, he's been. Yeah. It's been all over the place. Was injured early in his Michigan playing career. Tore his rotator cuff as Davon Jones buried under. Third down coming up and got into coaching right away while he was still a student at Michigan. Yeah, and this is outside zone to the left. This is what can happen. Not a good enough job that time by the tight end, Quentin Morris, helping Caleb Bright on the defensive end because you can't have lost yardage plays. Interesting decision here yeah. for Leffler. And I'm not budging. I'm running it again. Third and eight. We get everybody involved in the Bowling Green program sky high if they get this win. Long way to go in it, though. Loy fakes the jet handoff, the sweep there, and he's close, but he's going to be a little bit short. And it's going to be fourth and short. And I'm sure he's tempted, but I, yeah. I'm not going for this. I wouldn't do it. Your defense has been too good. You're up 13. Why would you give Toledo any chance for momentum? If you go for it here, you're giving Toledo a chance for momentum. I, I wouldn't do it. Right. I wouldn't either. Calling it fourth and inches. Do they go for it here, or do they just try to get Toledo to go off sides? Be a gutsy call if he goes for it. I think they're trying to get Toledo to jump. Play clock under five now. And there's the flag for delay a game. Delay a game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. And everything they did right there was exactly what I would have done. Yep. Quarterback run on third down. You want to try and draw them off sides? That's fine. Take it all the way down in the delay a game. You don't want to lose or use your last time out of your Scott Leffler. Everything they did right there, I think, is perfect. Now, you got to make sure you get this punt off. Bowling Green just one time out left. They took one early in the quarter, then lost a challenge. As back there is Danzel McKinley Lewis. And it has been a struggle all day for Toledo in every phase of their special teams. 
Purse down there making a play with 5.21 to go. Marlowe as well. Nowhere to go. Everything needed to get him down there. Yank the jersey, the shirt, whatever it takes. Time now, Ross, take a look at our principal financial game plan. You, these were, This was your game plan. How's it panned out? Toledo hasn't gotten off to a fast start. They have not kept Grant Loy in the pocket. Bowling Green's won the turnover battle and the special teams battle with the muffed punts, and then they've made Toledo have to throw. It's been Toledo, that has not, yeah, Toledo has not been able to run it. Tough day so far. Still 5.21 to go. Toledo's got all three timeouts. Carter Bradley incomplete. You said it. If you're, I mean, now though you kind of have to throw it in in some form, right? You can't just run it all here, right? No, that now they have to throw. Yeah. 5-17, especially the way Bowling Green's been able to run the ball pretty effectively themselves. And the one thing you don't let happen if you're Bowling Green, you don't let this guy at the bottom, Bryce Mitchell, you don't let him get a deep one. Yep, you don't want him taking the top off it, and he can do it. They swing it out here to Desmond Phillips. Forced out of bounds there by David Wilson. Beg your pardon, Jordan Anderson. You see this a lot, really every level of football now. Get the ball out to a perimeter playmaker and have your tight end or your other receiver get a block out there. Third and six. Bradley has some room, finds an alley, and he's going to get dropped at the 25. He's going to be about a yard shy, maybe less than a yard, but it brings up fourth down nevertheless. <laughs> Person Anderson make the tackle. And Bradley's a little slow to get out. They'll definitely go for it here, but the clock keeps going. So yep. he didn't get the first down. Back out live. Fourth and one. You know it's going to be a handoff to Kobach here. At least you're thinking that. Bradley fires. Wow. And they make the conversion there. That is a gutsy, yes. gutsy call there. I thought for Mitchell. sure. They were going to hand the ball off to Brian Kobach. Put the ball in the air like that. Oh. Could be a bad throw. It could be a drop. It could be good coverage. That could have been just about ball game. Yep. Bryce Mitchell comes up with a conversion. Bradley. And he gets away for the time being. Now just flings it up there. And broken up. Nicely done over there. By Bozeman. Jamari Bozeman almost had a pick six right there. They got pressure again. This Love time it. it was Konowalski. And Bradley did well, really, just to get rid of it. But he's got to be careful. That was almost a pick six. Oh. Loughton in again. Yep. Kovacs, the intended target. Second and ten. Loughton, Loughton's kids and grandkids are going to be watching this someday. Oh, he's going to be watching it all night if they win it. Here's Bradley now. Pressure comes, delivers, and it's caught by Danzel McKinley Lewis. Move the chains for Toledo once again. Oh, he's got a rocket. Speaking of the Toledo Rockets, he does have a Carter rocket. Bradley has a rocket. You see the way that ball came off his right hand. Kid's got a rocket. Toledo down by 13. 335 to play in this fourth quarter. Bradley hop around. They drop him. They get in there and get him. It's Konowalski who they told us yesterday, Leffler did. He said he's been the catalyst in promoting the culture we're trying to create here. He just did a right arm rip, club rip by Konowalski, rips the right arm through there. And the sixth year senior who came back knowing that it would be a rebuilding year, knowing how difficult this year could be, he came back anyway, and it's paying off for Bowling Green. 324 to go. That is the trophy. The Battle of I-75 trophy. Made out of bronze and granite. Bowling Green's never had it. Coming up next, college football continues as BYU looks for their first ever win in the Sunshine State. They take on USF. Then it's 7 Eastern. It's Mountain West Mayhem with back-to-back -back conference clashes only on CBS Sports Network. 337 kickoff for that game in Tampa. Following us.
That's a good nugget there. I didn't know BYU's never won a game in Florida. I like learning stuff, too. I didn't know that either. And Peters has checked into the game now, I believe. Eli Peters. Wow. Yeah, he had a big game last year when Guadani was injured and didn't play in that game. So he's come in and relieved the third quarterback now to play for Toledo, third and 14. I wonder if Carter Bradley was a little bit banged up or if Jason Candle just felt like Peters might give him a better chance with his experience to come from behind here. Peters had three touchdowns in the game last year, a 52-36 win. Peters fires, deflected. They were looking to Mitchell. No flag, incomplete. Jawan Hudson doing things on defense for Bowling Green. And he's a true freshman, too. Yes. They have some nice-looking youngsters in the secondary for Bowling Green that have made some plays. Right side of your screen, here he comes in. Nice job of putting the left hand in there. Huge play here, obviously. Fourth and 14. They're showing pressure. Do they come or do they bluff out? Look at the two linebackers in the A-gap yep. on either side of the center. I say they bring it. Stoppage. Timeout Toledo. Wow. They've got one left. You Bowling know, Green's got one left. You do not want to use that timeout right there. Yeah. So here we go. Toledo needs to talk it over. Fourth and 14. This is just about the ball game right here now that they use that timeout especially. Their main threat down the field this season has been Bryce Mitchell, yep. number 80. And they told us we need to get it to him more, and I haven't seen that today. Well, no, and I agree, but in fairness to them, Brown, uh, Bowling Green's played way off of him. You know, they have not let him get the deep stuff. He's got two catches for 10 yards. Here we go, fourth and 14. Eli Peters. They dropped out of it. They did. Peters delivers, and it almost intercepted, but it's a turnover on downs nevertheless. Jamari Bozeman had it, couldn't hang on. Bowling Green's got the ball with 3.08 to go. And that really wasn't even close. No. I mean, that, was, that looked like it was right to Bozeman. Bozeman had a beat on it. And now Bowling Green will do nothing but run it. Toledo can only even stop the clock one more time. One, yeah, one timeout left. Scott Leffler, first-year head coach, one and four coming in. And not just one and four. I mean, their last four games, 52 yeah. to nothing, 35-7, yep. 62-20, and 52 to nothing. They've been outscored 201 to 27 in those four games. They feed Davon Jones. Why not? He's been great for him. He and Denley have been outstanding. Two running backs. Grant Loy's been outstanding. Their quarterback. Interesting that Jason Candle doesn't call timeout there. And Toledo has turned it over on downs twice today. They have had a fumble as well. Second and eight. Yeah, I'm surprised, too. On the time off. Bowling Green doing the right thing, taking it down. Play clock less than five seconds when you snap it. Davon Jones, sidestep one. Davon Jones, good push. To the 35. He's still going, but they're spotting him down around the 35-yard line of Toledo. Third and five upcoming. And uh, this time Toledo does call. They do. Now. Yep. Well, we've got an opportunity of third and five coming up. Time not for a general play. They got a lot to pick from. What do we got? How about the first one? Bang. Loy hits Bryson Denley down the seam. He takes it down to the house. And really, Bowling Green had all the momentum at this point. It was 10-0, and that's when they really started to believe. Yep, 66-yard house call. Bryson Denley, huge day, over 100 receiving. Loy, a career day, throwing and rushing.
What's important here in four-minute offense, Ben, Scott. obviously the running back needs to stay in bounds. Yep. Ball security at a premium, and for all of the blockers, hands inside. You don't want to have a negative yardage play with a hold, and you don't want to stop the clock. Those are the three cardinal rules. Heavy set, Davon Jones, and beautiful play by Womack there coming off the corner. Brings up fourth down as we wind down to two minutes left in the fourth quarter. But that's okay. You can live with that right there. Yep. As long as you didn't fumble, you didn't go out of bounds, and nobody got a holding penalty against him. There's the trophy. Bowling Green has never won it. They've issued the trophy for the last eight years. In 2000, back in 2011, they didn't have it done. They finish this thing off. Oh, man. Those kids are going to go berserk. Yep. And rightfully so. Yep. It's been a tough last couple of years here for Bowling Green football fans. And timeout taken. With 125 to go. You know, Ben, I can just tell you from experience, my junior and senior year of college, we struggled. We were three and seven both years, as you see the last win versus Toledo, yeah. 2009. But our senior year, we beat Yale. Yeah. Even though we were three and seven. And you know what? We still year. talk about that. Yeah. It was the end of the year, big rivalry game, and I get together with my buddies from college. That is still the game that we talk about. Mm. And for all these Bowling Green players, but especially the seniors that have been here for four and five years. Yeah. This will be the game that they talk about really for the rest of their lives. Scott Leffler's guys are 85 seconds away from being able to do that. Fourth and four. Marlowe in motion. Loy doesn't want to take the sack, gets rid of it. Reaching in his left thigh in front of it as he ran there. So a turnover on Downs. Toledo's got it with 1.19 to go. Down 13, no timeouts left. And Peters will trot back on. He's the third quarterback. They've used today Mitch Guadani, their starter, had to lead the game earlier in the second half. They brought in Carter Bradley, Jason Candle did. That didn't work out, so they go to Peters who had three touchdowns against Bowling Green when they won last year. And now they got to be very aggressive. Big chunks of yardage. Yep. Here's Peters. Loads and fires. Dumps it off. That's Kobach. Sidesteps the defender. And Kobach close to the first down. But he didn't get it. He didn't get it. And he's in bounds. You got to either get out of bounds there or you got to get the first down. And Lloyd, the Bowling Green starter on the sideline. Clock now under a minute. Peters got a man caught. It's Desmond Phillips, and they're inside of the 35 to the 33. The clock will stop when they spot it with 49 seconds to go. And that is the big chunky yardage they needed down the field in the first down. Peters taking a look. Near side, looking at Mitchell, batted away. Jordan Anderson, we've talked about him a lot as they look to Bryce Mitchell and a big play from Anderson there. I don't know why he didn't try to catch it. Well, I was wondering that too. <laughs> I don't know what. I mean, you're allowed to catch it, Jordan. Yes. He's a true freshman, but <laughs> you're allowed to catch that, son. 34 ticks of the clock remaining. <laughs> I think he even realized afterwards. Exactly. What am I doing? Right. Could have been a pick to seal the game. Yep. Peters. Looking around, Kovacs near him, Peters going to run it, Kovac with a block, Peters gets out of bounds, and the clock stopped with 27 seconds to go. They're going to have to go to the end zone, they're going to have to go to the end zone pretty soon here. Yep. When you think about needing two touchdowns at this point, it's not enough to just get one touchdown, you got to think about it from the perspective of, we need two, so you got to score soon onside kick and then have a chance to throw the ball in the end zone. McKinley Lewis, top of your screen wide.
Peters. They got him. Ball oh, no. Green got him. Ball came up. Carl Brooks off the end got to him. The fifth sack of the day for Bowling Green. And the clock keeps running. Ten seconds and counting. Bowling Green, their sideline going absolutely nuts. Peters going to heave one to the end zone. And it's intercepted. Intercepted by Bowling Green. The game is over. And the Falcons have won the battle of I-75. Ending a nine-game losing streak. What a marquee win for Scott Leffler in his first year here at Bowling Green. Pass was intercepted by Bozeman in the end zone. And Bowling Green wins this battle of I-75 on the bragging rights for the next year. What a game. What a win for Bowling Green. Wow. You want to talk about building blocks and trying to rebuild a program like Scott Leffler is trying to do. This goes a long, long way. You're not kidding. 20 to 7 Bowling Green wins. They hadn't beaten Toledo since 2009 here at Doit Perry Stadium, 38-24. Today they win by 13, 20-7. And they are celebrating, and they should be. Scott Lefter, Leffler, the victorious head coach, standing by down on the field. Coach, for the first time ever, the Battle of I-75 Trophy is coming home to Bowling Green. What impressed you most about your team today? Well, they're tenacious. Um, we've got it back against the wall. There's a lot of things that we need to improve in this program. And I'm happy for the Bowling Green community. They've been through a bunch, and uh, the university's been through nine years of this, of uh, losing to these guys. But most importantly, I'm, I'm happy for my players and my staff, the ex-players that have played here. And... Um, a great day for Bowling Green. You told me at halftime that the team has 30 minutes of pure health left. How did they respond to that challenge? <laughs> it was the first time, and, uh, and I hope that, uh, I hope we learn from this. Uh, energy, passion, and doing things the right way uh, gives you a shot. And uh, we haven't done that. We haven't done that in six weeks or whatever the hell uh, we've been playing, but uh, they played relentless and tough. And finally, what a day from Grant Loy, a career day through the air on the ground. What impressed you most about your quarterback? <laughs> Where are you at, Grant? <laughs> Get over here. Uh, he played his tail off. He's a great kid. He's character. He's uh, bought into every single thing that we, we do. And um, he needs to talk. I don't need to talk anymore, all right? There you go. All Thanks, right. Coach. Awesome. Congrats on the win, Grant. Thank you. How was the team able to set the tone early on the very opening drive? You know, I think, I think, you know, emotions were high. You know, it's been nine years, uh, you know, since we've since we've gotten this one. You know, it's been a long time coming. And, you know, we struggled the past couple seasons, but you know, we were ready for this one. And uh, you know, I, I'm just so proud of our guys, the way they competed. It, it was just so awesome to see, and just everybody was doing their jobs all the time. And it was just, it was awesome to be a part of. Congrats, Grant. Enjoy the victory. Appreciate it. Back to you, Ben. Justin, thanks so much. Great stuff, great emotion down on the field. Scott Leffler, Grant Loy, talking with Justin down there, and they'll be celebrating this one deep into the night here in Bowling Green, Ohio. We'll take a timeout after the break. We'll check in with the crew in South Florida to preview this afternoon's BYU at USF game. Back here in Bowling Green, Ohio, that's head coach Scott Leffler without the hat. Brian Van Gorder, the defensive coordinator. I mean, this guy's been all over. Been a Broyles Award winner in his career. His defense today, five sacks, a pick, a fumble recovery. Special teams were great as well. A block punt, a block kick. I mean, it was just everything that could go right for Bowling Green today did go right, Ross. You just think about the hours that these guys have put in. Yep. Even talking with them yesterday, 
They knew this was going to be a very, very tough challenge. And they came out and got it. They talked about the big picture, and they deserved it. This was no fluke at all. Yep. Final numbers, biggest takeaway or takeaways from that? The rushing yards, okay. the one that's highlighted. I mean, obviously, we could talk about the special teams miscues because there was a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But for Bowling Green, that hasn't been able to run the ball very effectively at all, to be able to outrush and almost double up a Toledo team that leads the MAC yep. in rushing offense at 265 yards per game is simply incredible. And Toledo coming in was allowing 163 per game on the ground. So, yeah, very, very impressive performance by them all the way around. And Grant Loy, what a day he had, career high throwing and running the ball. And on top of all that, he's got great hair. Good flow. I mean, I'm so jealous. I watched him on the field during pregame warm-up. <laughs> he had a cutoff shirt on. I mean, I wish I was that guy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he looks awesome. Here are the max standings in the West. And Toledo drops to one and one. They beat Western Michigan in in-division game last week at home. But today they only mustered seven points. And Bowling Green, they even their record at one and one on the east side as they had lost their other their MAC opener against Kent State earlier. Got blown out in that game by about 40 points. And so they're one and one now. And, and in the mix, still a lot to play for. And this win is only going to do many, many things to help Scott Leffler and the rest of this year and in the recruiting as he moves forward trying to rebuild this proud program. Well, you're right. And they had a bunch of recruits here for this game. An incredible, incredible atmosphere. And a huge win. That goes a long way. How do you not come here now if you're oh, recruited this game? No kidding. And here's a look at around the max some action here. Western Michigan in the fourth on top of Miami. Eastern Michigan on top. Second quarter by seven. Central Michigan winning early in that game at home up in Mount Pleasant. And the other game's coming up at 330. So we'll step aside, take another time out here as they fly the W here in Bowling Green. It'll be flying for a while after this win as they win the Battle of I-75. Well, they honored the 1959 Bowling Green team. 100 years of football celebrated, and they win against Toledo, a team they hadn't beaten in the last nine games. And they win the trophy, the Battle of I-75, the granite and bronze trophy. They get it for the next 365 days. And what a win. Ross Tucker, Ben Holden, Justin Walters was with us as well on the broadcast. And the beauty of sports. This is what we all love about it. Yeah. Whether you're a player, a coach, a broadcaster, a fan, you really never know what's going to happen. For Bowling Green to win for the first time in 10 years, against their hated rival incredible moment for everyone that was in this stadium today and a huge win for all those things you mentioned and for scott leffler a guy coming in trying to rebuild this program well you know that they think that they are destined for big things here in bowling green yeah. and two three four years yep. down the line yep. they will look back and they will point to this game and they will say it started in october of 2019 and we finally beat toledo after 10 long hard years maxion's always fun i'll see you in florida next week man. i know this was incredible <laughs> i loved it incredible man great ball game for ross all of our crew hope you enjoyed it once again the final score bowling green 20 toledo 7 for ross tucker justin walters my name is ben holden it's been a presentation of cbs sports network the 24-hour home of cbs sports let's now send you to dave ryan Corey chavis and keenan reynolds